and, and about 10 to 12 percent of men will have actually have problems initiating and maintaining an erection, which can also be permanent. Prostate cancer, most common cancer in men, second most common cancer death. A um, lot of guys uh, are going to be treated for prostate cancer in the future. Um, we have basically three treatment options, active surveillance versus watchful waiting. Um, the difference in those two uh, strategies, active surveillance is, is potentially delaying curative therapy in men who have very low risk disease. Uh, we're going to watch those guys and then intervene with curative therapy if there's evidence of disease progression versus watchful waiting which is uh, a strategy in patients who have prostate cancer who are not really candidates for curative therapy because of their age or medical comorbidities. We just watch those guys and intervene with really palliative therapy using hormones or, or possibly uh, palliative radi radiation treatment if there's evidence of, of pain or symptoms. So they're quite different strategies. Um, other treatment options of surgery and radiation are the ones that can have the adverse impact on sexual function. So uh, we have the, the local Western Canadian expert in robotic surgery with us, Dr. Goldenberg, um, uh, who I'm sure would be happy to field questions about robotics, which seems to be the hot topic these days. But uh, surgical treatment for prostate cancer can either be open or laparoscopic. Laparoscopy can be the standard laparoscopic approach or the robot-assisted laparoscopic approach, minimally invasive approaches. Um, the, I think um, all of these surgical treatments can, will, and I tell all my patients to expect a definite adverse impact on sexual function. You will not ejaculate. There's no fluid that will come out, and there is a significant risk of having a serious impairment in your in your erectile function after any of these procedures, be it open laparoscopic or robotic. There was a recent study out, it wasn't a great study, mind you, it was a, a study done over many institutions, but it actually suggested that robotic and laparoscopic surgical results with respect to incontinence and erectile dysfunction might be a little less better than with an open prostatectomy. Uh, certainly, there hasn't been anything out to show that it's way better. In spite of that, 85% of the radical prostatectomies done in the United States, 85% of them are done by robots. So, and you can see there's a couple of pictures there. There's Dr. Goldenberg looking into the uh, machine. It's, and that's what the patient looks like is, <laughs> as he's having his minimally invasive radical prostatectomy. And no matter which option you go for, I think men need to be aware that there is going to be a significant adverse impact on their sexual function. <coughs> Prostate cancer is also treated with radiation options, brachytherapy or external beam radiation. Often men pick these treatment options because there's a perception that there is better potency after radiation than surgery. When you look at the data, two years and three years out after both radical prostatectomy and, and brachytherapy, the potency rates are the same, 35 to 50 percent. Um, there's really no difference. The problem, I think, with surgery is that you can have sex the night before your radical prostatectomy, and the next day you've got a problem, and it takes up to a year, maybe two years, to recover. With the brachytherapy, the your external beam radiation, it tends to occur over the course of the first year. Initially, you don't have a problem, but it develops over the course of, of one to two years. So you have to look at data two years out, and really, they're not that different. And I think that men who pick a treatment option for prostate cancer based purely on this alone are doing themselves a disservice. Finally, hormone therapy, uh, generally reserved for men who, um, who have metastatic disease or who need palliation of their disease. Hormone therapy is kind of like napalm. It blows everything in terms of sexual dysfunction. It affects your libido. It affects your ejaculate volume. It affects it retrograde ejaculation. It causes erectile dysfunction. It's, it's really, um, it, it sort of attacks all the, the facets of sexual function. And very few men who are on uh, androgen therapy are, are sexually active. 
Again, Dr. Goldenberg and Dr. Gleave have really pioneered the intermittent androgen suppression uh, protocol, which allows men to come off the androgen therapy, lets their testosterone build up, they can become sexually active again, uh, and then their PSAs are followed, and they get a break from the androgen therapy. There's benefits in terms of sexual dysfunction, uh, reduction in osteoporosis, possibly a reduction in the incidence of cardiovascular disease, and there's some theoretical evidence to suggest that it might actually be a better way of, uh, of, of controlling the prostate cancer as well, work that was done through uh, the, the Prostate Center in Vancouver. So I'm going to stop there, and I think we're going to have questions at the end. So thank you.